Good morning. Happy Sunday. I would like to welcome all of you joining us worship this morning. I'm welcoming all of you joining us from home and all those who are joining us in person. We would love to worship God this morning. So before we start, let's prepare our hearts so that we are ready to worship our God. Let's bow ahead and pray. The Heavenly Father, you alone are great. We can see your marvelous deeds through everything that you've created. You are alone are our God, and we trust in you. Help us when we make mistakes, and hold us when we feel like we have failed. Do not forsake us, O God, for you are gracious, forgiving, and merciful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, boys and girls, this morning is actually uh, the start of Lent this week. And Lent is 40 days um, up to Easter. So it's kind of like a countdown, but it's also like a time that we remember what Jesus has done for us and what he has given up for us. So let's sing the next song, which is a very good song um, that talk about, you know, um, that we will need to have Jesus in our life. Otherwise, we will never be able to. Um, to, to like go on and continue. So this next song is um, Lord I Need You. If you know the song, you can sing with me.
So this next song is a little bit happier. It's a happier song. Um, it's talk about how Jesus is our friend and we can always, uh, no matter what situation, we can always find him and talk to him through prayer. So this song is called What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And um, it's a very old song, but it's also a very meaningful song, okay? And if you listen to it, you can follow me and sing. is from Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 2 and Caitlin has actually colored this Bible verse and she's going to read it for us so let's welcome Caitlin. Jesus filled up the Holy Spirit left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during these those days and at the end of them he was hungry. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 to 2. Thank you, Caitlin, for reading today's Bible verse. Now, boys and girls, have you ever seen people wearing a t-shirt like this? Or a hat like this? Or bracelets that say WWJD? Now, do you know what it stands for when you see them wearing this? I know some of you knows. What, would it, what did it stand for? These were very, very popular back in the days. WWJD stands for What Would Jesus Do? Now, some people wear them as a reminder to remind them to always be like Jesus, to think about every situation, what Jesus would do. So what are some of the things we know that Jesus would do that we could follow and to be like him? What do you think? Maybe being kind to people, because Jesus is kind to all the people, including those people who are sinners or even people who are really bad uh, and hate him, right? Or we can be like Jesus to serve other, like when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Or we can follow Jesus to obey his parents, like when Jesus was young, he obeyed his parents. Or we can follow Jesus to always put God's will first. Remember his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane? Always put God's will first. 
So these are some of the things that I could think of that when I think of stuff, what would Jesus do? I can follow what he does. And throughout the Bible, there are many, many examples of what Jesus has done that we can learn and imitate and follow. Now, why do people wear a WWJD bracelet? Why do they wear it as a reminder? Well, a lot of the times we can be tempted to do bad things, whether we're at school or with our friends or even at home. We might have bad thoughts, bad words, or bad things that we're not supposed to do or things that are not God honoring or just things that we do that are not pleasing to God, right? I'm pretty sure you and me both are, have been in these situations where we suddenly do something that shock ourselves, that we go, wow, this is something really bad that we shouldn't be doing. It feels like some forces is pulling you to disobey. Now you are not alone here. Jesus know what it is like to be tempted to. So let's turn to Luke chapter four. It's today's Bible story. We're gonna start from verse one all the way to verse 13. So if you have your Bible, you can turn to Luke chapter four, verse one to 13. Now the Bible tells about a time Jesus went out into the wilderness for 40 days to be by himself. This is actually right after he got baptized and God's spirit led him out to the, whole, to the wilderness to fast and pray. During that time, God's enemy, Satan, came and tempted Jesus to do some things that Jesus knew were right. Jesus knew weren't good. But just because Jesus is God and he's so powerful, that doesn't mean that the things that they, Satan suggested weren't tempting at all. Because after all, Jesus is still kind of like a human being. He was in, you know, as a human being. So first, Satan suggested that Jesus turn the rock, the stone right in front of him into bread that Jesus could eat. The devil said to him in Luke chapter 4 verse 3, If you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Now he's not only telling Jesus to turn the stone to become bread, he's actually challenging you, challenging him, saying that if you are the son of God, tell the stone to turn into bread so that you can eat it. Now I want you to close your eyes for a moment and imagine what it might feel like if you have not eaten for 40 days, 40 for zero. Imagine you haven't eaten for 40 days. Even imagine you haven't eaten for one day. How would that feel? And then times 40. How can you feel? How would you feel? You must be like crazy hungry. And when you see stuff, everything kind of turned into food. Now Jesus could have easily done what Satan has suggested. But did he? No, he didn't. Instead, he answered Satan with the scripture from Deuteronomy. He said, it is written, man does not live by bread alone. Now Deuteronomy is one of the first five books of the Bible and Jesus must have memorized all these Bible verses so that he can just pull it out and defend Satan with it. Now Satan failed this time, so he took Jesus up to a very high place and showed him all the worldly kingdoms below. Satan said, all of this belongs to me. If you would bow down and worship me, I will give it to you. Now, worship also means making things more important than God. So what kind of things are you sometimes tempted to make to become more important than God? Money? Video games? Your iPad or your iPhone? Or even yourself? But here is what Jesus said to answer Satan temptation. Jesus said, also quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13, he said, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Wow, imagine that. Satan was saying that, Worship me, I'll give you everything. But Jesus said, I already know God control everything, not you. And God tell us to only worship him and serve him. 
So Satan fails again. Then Satan took Jesus to Jerusalem and led him up to the highest point on the temple. And Satan said to Jesus, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. Because in the Bible, God said he will send his angel to rescue you. Now, do you think God could actually keep Jesus from harming if he jumped off that temple? Of course, God could keep Jesus safe. But Jesus did not get tempted by Satan. Jesus once again used the scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16 to defend against Satan. Jesus said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. That means do not test your God. Do not test to see if I jump in front of the car, whether God will save me. Because you are like basically tempting you to challenge God, which is not right. Do you know what the devil did? He gave up. He said, oh, that's so annoying. I'll come back and try another day. Now, the next time when the devil tempts you to do something wrong, something bad, look into the Bible and see what the Bible says. Or think about some of the Bible, you know, Sunday school lesson you learned. And remember what God said or what Jesus said. Then do what Jesus did. Answer Satan with the scripture, with the word from the Bible. So remember, we always get tempted, but we can always defend and drive away Satan with the word of God. So let us bow our head and pray. Dear God, Help us to know your word and to use your word and follow Jesus' example in our life. Help us to understand the Bible so that when we face temptation, we can remember what would Jesus do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's do the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sins against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Even the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to lead us not be tempted by the devil. So remember, study his word, use his word because it's more powerful than any weapons you can have to defend against Satan. So that's it for our worship today. Coming Saturday, March 12, is Chloe's 12 years old birthday. Happy birthday, Chloe. We want to wish you a very happy birthday. Always follow God and trust his plan for you. And may the light of Jesus shine through you on your birthday. And that's it for our worship. If you want to join us next week for in-person, make sure you sign up online between Wednesday and Saturday. And for those of you who are staying home worshipping with us, I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.